the Batman is kind of messy, and here are some of the things that I found while making my almost two hour long comparison between the Joker movie and the Batman movie. There are a few contrivances, horrendous plot armor, and a few other aspects that make this plot a little messy. Let's go through the biggest issues right now in chronological order. The first criticism slash flaw is part of a larger world building issue of the film, which is the relationship between Batman and the police. It is very strange that all the cops at the crime scene where the mayor was killed do not push back way more against Batman being here. It's made very apparent that the police is not at all fond of Batman, since he's a vigilante. He's involved in this? No, he's not involved. How do you know? He's a goddamn vigilante! He could be a suspect! I find it very hard to believe that none of them would try to arrest him, since the only protection he has in this moment is Lieutenant Gordon's trust. But everyone else is incredibly skeptic of him, and it's also important to keep in mind that many of them are corrupt, so there would be an even stronger incentive to arrest him. And when the commissioner arrives at the scene and is surprised to see Batman here, he criticizes Gordon for involving him in this investigation. But there should be much more of a pushback from pretty much everyone. And no, I do not think that Gordon has enough authority as a lieutenant to make all of them be tolerant of Batman investigating the crime scene. There will be many more scenes with the police that are similarly contrived and ignore relatively obvious factors that break them almost entirely. We'll get to them when we get to them. The next point is very minor, but Gordon should have been a bit more careful when taking the encrypted USB from the Riddler and just putting it into his private laptop. He shouldn't be surprised that all the photos were automatically sent to all the news broadcasts from his email. Either way, the Riddler had access to the photos and would have sent them out himself if Gordon put that drive like into a secure laptop. So this doesn't change anything in terms of the plot, but I think Gordon should have been more careful here. In the next scene, Batman goes to the Iceberg Lounge to ask the Penguin on the identity of the woman in the photos. He knocks on the door and this thug opens it, closes it and then gets his twin to intimidate Batman together, telling him he should leave. And of fucking course, he beats them up in like 3 seconds and steps into the club. These two guys are complete idiots. Batman has been active for 2 years now and it's been established that basically everyone knows how strong and dangerous he can be. These guys work for the Penguin, so they undoubtedly should know that fighting Batman is not a good idea. Pretty stupid. So Batman gets inside the club and is attacked by a lot of goons. Now, this fight scene is pretty great on a technical level, however, it is incredibly irresponsible for the last two guys to pull out guns and start shooting at Batman, given that this is a very crowded, dark club with flashing lights. They could have easily injured or killed innocent people during this fight. And I'm pretty sure the Penguin would try his best to avoid that kind of stuff happening in his club. And what makes this even stranger is the fact that the Penguin just walks up to him as he's still fighting his goons. So why even escalate the situation to that degree when the Penguin wants to handle things quietly and easily? One could argue that these guys didn't know the Penguin's orders in the hassle of how fast Batman showed up here, and that's why they attacked him. But just like with the twin thugs before, they know how strong Batman is, so why even try? And there's also the huge risk of killing innocent people. So what the hell are you guys doing? Another issue I have with this concerns Batman's strategy right here. Like, man, he just walks through the main door. This is not the optimal way of getting to the Penguin with the least amount of trouble or potential conflict. I'd argue it does some considerable damage to his character, since he most likely expected something like this to happen. Maybe without the guns? But it's still pretty headstrong behavior. Batman is usually much more careful and stealthy in situations like this. The best argument for his bad decision making right here is that this is a very young Batman that might become much more clever and capable later in his career. But I don't think this is good enough. There are many points in this film that show how silent and sneaky he can be when he wants to. We're pretty good at that. Hey. I can't get through, the lines are down. You're leaving. Jesus. Don't you ever just say hello? So, this is just a very dumb decision on his part. I actually have a few problems with the portrayal of Batman in this film, which we'll get to later. So, now we get to what is most likely the biggest plot contrivance in the entire film. As Batman talks to the Penguin, Selina walks in and they exchange a few looks. She brings Penguin some money and he gives her those drug droplets. 
And as she takes them, Selina reacts quite overtly when seeing the photos of Annika. And Bruce catches up on this, as well as the pair of shoes she's wearing, which match the pair of shoes on the photo. And this gives him a huge clue on Annika, since he then follows Selina to her apartment. This one, very brief interaction with Selina gives Bruce so much crucial information for his investigation. If Selina didn't come in while he was talking to Penguin, which is about 5 to 10 minutes in total, Bruce would have had no clue on the identity of Annika. So the one time he decides to enter the Iceberg launch, he just happens to come across the girlfriend of Annika, who is coincidentally also wearing the exact same shoes as on the photo? I think the problem of all this is quite obvious. You could write off the shoe thing by assuming that Selina always wears a specific outfit when she's working in the club, but it's still an absurdly convenient coincidence. And remember, Selina was surprised to see Batman here. She was entering the Penguin's office for a totally unrelated reason. The way the scene plays out helped Batman so much in figuring out what these photos mean. It's insanely lucky. And this obviously leads to both of them working together to expose Falcone at the end. A whole bunch of the story depends on this short meeting between the two. Not great. Now we get to the scene of Selina breaking into the mayor's house. And as she opens the safe, Batman appears behind her and they have a bit of a fight. And all that noise alerts a police officer who is currently patrolling through the house. I find it pretty convenient that 1. The officer wasn't curious enough to just maybe take a closer look at the room and 2. That he didn't notice the open safe or Selina's gadgets lying on the floor. This guy could have very easily spotted them right here. And this could have been a big problem, because if he spotted them, they would have had to knock him out, which would cause many inconveniences, especially for Batman further down the line. It's a very lucky moment for sure. And later, we get the scene of Selina going through the iceberg launch, wearing one of Batman's high-tech camera contact lenses. And this way, Batman can get all sorts of information on which people are corrupt and stuff. This helps him a lot in the case, all thanks to that very convenient interaction between the two. And she gets into a conversation with the DA, who is incredibly high on those eye drop drugs. So Selina sits down with him and she manages to pull a shit ton of private and potentially incriminating information out of him, with almost no effort whatsoever. And she isn't even trying all that hard to hide her interest in these informations. What's more, the DA is very clearly not comfortable talking about that stuff. So why on earth does he tell her all of this? Just because he's high on drugs? Come on, that's way too weak of an explanation. I mean, hell, this guy is the DA. He's a professional. If anyone should be very careful telling some random person about all of the illegal and shady stuff that's going down in the city, it's him. This guy, very conveniently, is so high on drugs that he just tells her all that Bruce needs to know to take drastic progress in figuring out the corruption in Gotham. There was a rat. We had an informant. We had big time information on Salvador Moroni. That's how we got him out of the drops business. He's talking about the Moroni case. But if this guy knows, it's gonna come out. What's even more stupid is that Selena went there the exact time in which the DA was there. We even see him leave shortly after, when he gets abducted by the Riddler in his car. So, if Bruce and Selina decided to go to the club a day or two, heck, even just an hour later, Bruce would have probably never gotten all of that crucial information. All of that stuff would be lost, and he would need to figure it out another way. There is a very clear pattern of the story bending itself so that Batman can proceed with his investigations. And this is a very big issue, especially when it comes to a Batman story, I think. Jumping ahead a tiny bit, we get to the scene in which a car crashes into the crowded church of people and the DA steps out with a bomb attached to his body and also a ringing phone for the Batman. And we get a short time skip of maybe about 2-3 to three hours with the police having surrounded and cleared the entire area. And Gordon has contacted Batman to answer the phone and to take the lead in this situation. Similar to the very first scene with the police, I do not think that the police would let this guy, who all of them except Gordon distrust very much, do anything in this situation. They even react in shock and outrage when realizing that Batman is here and basically takes over their job. The only reason for them to not interfere at all is the fact that the Batman is supposed to answer the phone. However, I don't think this would stop them from trying to handle the situation themselves, or at least with Batman together. They would 100% insist on giving him instructions or some guidelines, 
But what they do here, which is basically doing nothing and watching Batman do his thing, is not in line with what we are told about the relationship between the police and Batman. This is a pretty severe situation. The DA could potentially die here. So I find it extremely hard to believe that they wouldn't take matters into their own hands and let Batman just have his way with the Riddler and the DA. So when the DA refuses to say the name of the rat on Riddler's livestream, he gets blown up, with Batman standing right in front of him. So Bruce is dead. This is a pretty huge explosion, and he was standing like 3 inches away from the DA. There's no way in hell that he wouldn't sustain any severe injuries because of this. He's thrown back a good 5 meters, and then falls unconscious. But this doesn't really affect him at all going forward. It only knocks him out for some time. Besides, how stupid was it on Bruce's part to not be more careful and distance himself? He even could have just thrown his cape around him to guard him at least a little bit. But no, he just doesn't care about this bomb potentially blowing up in his face. And next we see him lying on the table of an interrogation room with many many cops surrounding him and curiously looking at him. One guy decides to try and pull off Batman's mask, but very conveniently he wakes up at that exact moment and immediately starts fighting them. Dude, are you not totally disoriented and dizzy right now? You had a bomb explode right in front of you maybe two hours ago, and as soon as you wake up you're just back on track ready to go? We can be glad you didn't die right here. What's even dumber about this, apparently the cops, who saw Batman essentially getting blown up in the church, decided to put him into a police car, drive him to the apartment, and drop him onto this table? Still wearing a suit and armor? Guys, this man needs medical attention. Who knows what kind of potentially life-threatening injuries he sustained because of this explosion. Whatever they decided to do here is pretty stupid and unrealistic. They should have called an ambulance right away and have taken off his suit to save this guy's life. Even further, Gordon prevents the other cops from taking off Batman's mask, even though he would absolutely take it off himself, given how much this explosion should have fucked Batman up. I really do not like this scene very much, because these issues are just so in your face. So when Batman runs up onto the rooftop of the building, he wraps his cape around him, which creates some sort of a wingsuit that he then uses to fly off the building. Now, as cool as this entire sequence is presented, how it ends is incredibly atrocious. Batman, for some fucking reason, tries to land on the top of a truck, but when he's almost there, he gets caught between it and a bridge. He smashes his head against a steel bar, he then hits the truck, and then smashes onto the street. Man, you are dead so many times over. The sheer momentum he had when smashing into the bridge would have been enough to kill him. But instead, he just awkwardly hobbles away and we get to the next scene, where he's totally fine again. The plot armor is through the roof at this point. And the thing is, it didn't have to be that way at all. He could have just landed onto the ground somewhere, and all of the shit could have been avoided. Why make Batman both stupid and almost invincible with this scene by having him fly straight into a bridge? Whose idea was this? Next, Batman and Gordon go to some industrial area where there's a drug deal happening with a penguin. And right as they are both observing the deal, Selina shows up to steal some money. She goes to the car and opens the first bag of money, followed by the second bag, revealing the corpse of her girlfriend Annika. Which is weird. At that point in the story, it has been quite some time since she was abducted from her home and killed. So why would they leave her around in this car for that long? They don't have any benefit in keeping her. As soon as they killed her, they should have gotten rid of the body. Besides, why would her body be right next to the bag of money in this exact car? This very stupid and unrealistic decision to keep the body is clumsily forced onto them just so Selina and the audience knows that Annika has been killed. The scene continues with them getting noticed by everyone and being shot at. And then Batman reveals his Batmobile and starts chasing down the penguin in a very cool car chase. But Gordon is still there, surrounded by all of these dangerous gunmen. Gordon should very likely die because Batman just decided to disregard him entirely and go after the penguin instead. This is a very huge issue and the film is totally oblivious to the fact that Batman just left Gordon to die because he thought that getting the penguin is much more important than saving the life of the only cop who deeply trusts him. This is a substantial issue, and I'm not even primarily talking about Batman's decision. What's really bad about this is the fact 
that Gordon easily got out of this encounter, seemingly totally unscathed, when he shows up later in the scene where they interrogate the penguin. Gordon doesn't even mention the fact that Batman left him there on his own. I find it baffling that they've overlooked that part in the script. It's pretty damaging stuff. And this is followed by another very big issue. Maybe even multiple ones. So this very awesomely shot car chase ends with the penguin causing a lot of destruction on the street, with many cars and trucks piling up and crashing against each other. And then a ramp perfectly drops right in front of Batman, he speeds up and drives over the pile of vehicles that are now exploding. What the actual fuck? The chances of this happening are so incalculably small, Batman should have realistically died here or at least be so severely injured that the penguin would have gotten away. But instead, this shit happens and Batman smashes, or rather flies straight into the penguin's car, making it flip 30 times over and land upside down. This should have caused much more damage to penguin than we see him sustain because of this, which is almost nothing. At least have him knocked out for a few moments or something. But in the interrogation scene, he seems completely fine again, which I guess I can believe, but still, this crash was pretty brutal, and Batman can't be sure that the Penguin will survive what he does to him here, which is also pretty bad for his character. He needs Penguin alive. This... <laughs> this is not a great or secure way of achieving that goal, my man. What's even worse about this is the fact that Batman just steps out, out of his Batmobile and walks up to the Penguin, even though right behind him is a massive fire with a bunch of destroyed vehicles and many, many dead people. Batman doesn't acknowledge this at all. He only cares to get the penguin. He even takes his sweet time walking to his car. And why does he do that? Well, because they want to have the extremely cool slow-mo shot of Batman stepping out of his Batmobile in front of a massive fire walking towards the upside down camera. And yes, it's a great shot. It's a great fucking shot. But damn, everything else about this scene suffers immensely just for this shot to happen, which is not great. The complete negligence on Batman's part about the safety of the people even before the explosion happened, as he was chasing down Penguin with very high speeds, damages his character a lot. And neither Batman nor the Penguin face any consequences because of this massive explosion. No one cares to bring it up again. It is simply a thing that happened because it looks cool and... Please just don't think about it guys. Please don't. The next somewhat flawed scene is when Bruce does that weird detective montage in his house where he sprays the floor with paint and does this super time consuming arrangement right after visiting Alfred in the hospital for the first time. This scene is pretty hilarious to be honest. What the hell are you doing Bruce? He's going out of his way to make it harder for himself to work on the case effectively. Why not just have everything laid out on a desk or a table so that he can actually work on stuff and easily take notes and so on. This is just a super bizarre sequence. I think it only exists to have some cool visuals and shots, but again, in complete expense of the characters. Like, you know you have to clean this shit up afterwards, right? When Bruce walks up to Falcone and asks if his dad had the journalist kills, like the Riddler said on TV, we see the penguin just chilling around. This means that he didn't get arrested by the police after the car chase with Batman. This is absurd. Gordon should have contacted someone for the explosion that the Riddler caused and the lives he took, but they just leave him there and don't seem to care at all. Next pretty strange thing, when Selina activates the bat signal on that building when she's torturing the corrupt cop from earlier, Batman and Gordon show up and they both seem very confused about someone else having turned it on. So Selina essentially just went up there and so could literally anyone else in Gotham City. I find it pretty strange that Bruce and Gordon didn't take care to close off this place at least a little bit so that only they can access it. Because if you think about it, a random guy could just follow the signal and locate the building where it's coming from. So by that logic, many people should know about this location and many would have probably tried to access it over the last two years. Pretty weird. Another thing in this scene, this corrupt police officer doesn't have any problem with telling Batman and Gordon pretty much everything they need to know about the corrupt system of Gotham City. Compare that to the DA in the church, who, even when the Riddler was about to blow him up, was way too scared to say that Falcone is the rat. And this guy just keeps on talking about much more than just Falcone, which is a bit strange, even given the fact that he has been tortured by Selina. Further, when Selina goes to shoot the guy, Bruce pulls her back, and then she slowly walks towards him 
and puts his leg onto him before pushing him off the building. I think Bruce should have reacted much faster. He should have pulled her back again as soon as she was giving off signs that she was going to push the police officer off. But instead, Gordon and Bruce just wait for her to push him off before they start doing anything. Like, why? It looks so stupid. When Selina is alone with Falcone, why does she take so long to kill him? As soon as she is alone with him, she should be pulling out her gun and shoot him. This is a relatively big problem, considering that she has a huge time advantage on Bruce, who still needs to unmask himself, get inside the club, and then fight all these guards with the machine guns. It's incredibly lucky that right as Batman is about to turn off the power of Falcone's room, Selina goes for the kill at that exact moment, and never before that. The timing of this is pretty insane. And we also have another very big inconsistency concerning Batman's suit durability. Earlier in the film, we see him being shot at and it makes him stumble back a bit, which means that he can tank some shots from regular handguns, but it will have an impact on him. However, in this sequence, where the guys have much stronger and high caliber machine guns, Batman easily goes up to them and punches them as they keep shooting at him. This is bad, since compared to the previous instances of him getting shot, he's pretty much invincible in this short fight scene. It looks great. It looks really great. But the further implications are quite concerning and mess with his vulnerability a lot. And when Selina is about to shoot Falcone, I don't think she should have missed that shot. Yeah, the lights turned off, but she did pull the trigger before that point, so I don't know. It seems like a relatively tough shot to miss. So then, Batman takes Falcone outside to all the non-corrupt cops to arrest him. And then Penguin, who some fucking how is still not in jail, pops up at the front door and pulls an Uzi right in front of all the cops. What a stupid move. What was he expecting the police was gonna do to him afterwards? Well, they should arrest him straight away and put him in jail, right? Um, no. He is not arrested after almost killing Gordon and many other police officers, which is just incredibly weird. It's the dumbest thing. Besides, how the heck is Batman still working with the police after punching Gordon in the face and fleeing from them? They should arrest him as well. The film just doesn't acknowledge all the bad and incriminating things that the Penguin and the Batman have done throughout. It's pretty frustrating. And so the police arrest the Riddler and go up to his apartment, and a forensics team inspects the entire place. But they fail to look under the carpet? Come on, this is kinda ridiculous. They should have definitely found the map of Gotham under the carpet. This is a very contrived oversight. And the way Batman manages to figure it out is so dumb as well. He cluelessly walks through the Riddler's apartment after their conversation, and then this random ass cop we saw two times earlier shows up and says, "Oh." My dad was a carpenter, this is a tool to remove carpets. And yeah, that's that. This moment is so poorly done. If it wasn't for this random cop, Batman would have been completely lost. He wouldn't have figured it out in time to stop the Riddler's followers from shooting everyone, or something, whatever they were planning to do. For a detective story, there is a ton of very convenient stuff happening to our protagonist. It's not that great. Now, let's talk about the Riddler's plan a bit, cause unfortunately, there's another big issue. When he talks to Batman through his cell, he thinks that Batman has already figured out his plan to the end, also including the final hidden map underneath the carpet, and the video of himself explaining that he plans on flooding the city. It was all there. You mean you didn't figure it out? Oh, you're really not as smart as I thought you were. I guess I gave you too much credit. What have you done? But if this were the case, if Batman figured out that last bit together with the police, before he went to talk to the Riddler, they would have had enough time to prevent the vans from exploding, which means that his plan would fail. If they saw the map and the marked locations on it, plus the video, they could have easily went to these locations and defuse all the bombs in time. Even if they didn't see the video on Riddler's computer explaining his plan, the map is enough info for them to check these locations and see what's going on. So why is the Riddler surprised when he realizes that Batman hasn't figured it out yet? Because if he did, the Riddler's plan just wouldn't work. What's up with that? It doesn't make any sense. So then the city starts getting flooded, and a lot of people are running towards Square Garden, where the new mayor is going to give her a speech. But hold on. Why would they tell all the civilians to come to this place specifically? This doesn't seem to be the safest place in the city. 
They should have just told everyone to enter a high building and get as high as possible. Telling everyone to go here is really not the most optimal decision. And Riddler's followers are chilling on the construction near the roof of Square Garden, preparing to, I guess, shoot everybody? And of course, there's a lot of panic and chaos, so the police are assuring the mayor not to go onto the stage, but she does it anyway, which I think is pretty unrealistic. The police should absolutely stop her, especially Gordon wouldn't leave her on her own to go out there. They would definitely hold her back. And then she gets shot by one of the Riddler guys. Gordon runs outside to drag her off the stage, and as he does so, the other guys start shooting at her multiple times. I'm not sure how capable these guys are with guns, but I'm pretty sure at least half of them know their stuff, so I find it very strange that all of their shots miss her. There's definitely some plot armor right here. So then, Batman comes in to save everyone and stop the shooters. But the way he goes about entering Square Garden is highly irresponsible and negligent. He makes the glass roof of the area shatter with explosives, and all the many many shards fall down into the area. It's very lucky that no one died or got injured by all of these shards. We don't even know if no one got hurt. So yeah, Batman potentially hurt some civilians just to look cool when entering the building. Why not make it more stealthy? Have him suddenly appear behind the shooters or something. That would be much more in line with Batman's methods in general as well. But oh well, I guess we gotta have all of these cool shots and moments without thinking about their implications. Also, Batman again has a ton of plot armor in this fight. Especially when he's holding onto that round thing in the middle, the guys just keep shooting and shooting at him. And not only do they miss so many times, but Batman doesn't even seem very concerned about this current situation. Which is very unsatisfying. It really messes with the stakes of this fight. Plus, when the last guy blasts Batman with a shotgun, he very slowly approaches him and takes his sweet time reloading and aiming at him so that Selina has enough time to save Batman. Again, pretty heavy plot armor. And now we get to the final plot armor moment of the film, which is Batman surviving the electric shock of the huge wire that he cuts off with his battering. This wire has enough electric energy to kill many many people in the water. And this is exactly why Bruce immediately decides to endanger and potentially sacrifice himself for these people. I actually thought that they were going to kill Batman in this moment, because I couldn't think of any way that he would be able to survive so many volts shooting through his body. But then again, given how incredibly durable his suit is, this might actually be a thing that he could survive. But he's been doing this vengeance thing for only two years. Does it really make sense that his suit is so ridiculously overpowered so early in his career? I don't think so. Well, that was something. There's no denying that the Batman has a ton of plot issues. And what's pretty frustrating about this is that these are substantial problems that could have been fixed pretty easily. They just needed some few tweaks to set all of these small pieces into a much more cohesive and coherent full picture. The plot is this film's biggest problem, from the relationship between Batman and the Gotham police, the very apparent plot armor in many scenes, how the story doesn't acknowledge extremely substantial and important implications of many scenes, just because they want a cool shot, there are all the conveniences that give Batman crucial clues and information to solve the case, and just a bunch of very oddly timed moments that are super unlikely to happen. However, despite all of these plot issues, which there are quite a lot of, there still are many excellent and very deliberate decisions in terms of how it was written. I think that this story, even with all its flaws, has a lot of great stuff going for it. Especially looking at its major themes and the arc of Batman and Bruce finding himself, as well as a lot of character relationships that are very emotionally resonant. I'll be covering that stuff mostly in the character section.